OCN, Word of God to the World. Hello, hello, hello in the mighty name of Jesus. Welcome, welcome. I have an exciting subject to talk about today, something that's fresh with me, and I believe it re will really bless you. The title will be Treasure, but I want to pray first. Oh, Father of glory, give unto me a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ, that my eyes are opened and those who are hearing me, their eyes are open, their ears are open, that we know the hope of our calling that you have in us, in Christ Jesus, and that we know the inheritance you have planned for us. Oh, because you are so gracious. And we know we're learning the exceeding greatness of your power to us who believe. Thank you um, that you defeated the devil. You died and you rose again. Oh, and now you are seated in heavenly places oh, with all rule and authority over the demonic realm. So we thank you, Lord, that you've given that power to us. I'm quoting Ephesians 1, dear friends, 17, I think through 20 or something like that. Uh, but God is good. He is the father of glory and he's your father. And I'm saying, oh, he has something good for you today because he loves you. He sent his son to die for you, didn't he? And I'm going to talk about a parable about the treasure. You've probably all heard it since you were, if you were in the church, you knew it. You know, this was in, in Matthew 13. Jesus is talking in parables to, um, and then his disciples ask afterward, well, Lord, how come you're talking in parables? Uh, talk to us plainly. And he's saying, to, because um, the others do not understand, but I'll tell you about it. And so he is explaining to them a parable about a good seed that is cast in the ground. This is Matthew 13, and some is on good soil. Now, I, I believe all, you, all of you want to be good soil. And you don't want the birds or the devil or anything or the cares of life to destroy that seed because you were called for this time and this place. Well, then Jesus goes on and he tells about a parable of a treasure that's hidden in the field. You remember that? There's also one about the, uh, the pearl found in the field. Well, anyway, this man is walking along and he finds a treasure in the field. And he thinks, oh, 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 but this field doesn't belong to me. I'll bury it again, and then I'll buy that field, and then the treasure will belong to me, and oh, it'll be so glorious. So we thought, and this is what you can believe, which we did, like Jesus is the treasure. He is. He is the treasure, and he's hidden in our heart. He is the treasure hidden in our heart. But I have a Passion Bible, <laughs> um, the, the Passion Bible, and it puts a different, different meaning to it. And as I read that, I thought, oh, this is new. So I'm going to read it to you. This is Dr. 
uh, Brian Simmons, and um, he went and lived on some island with his family, and he was a linguist, and he, he knows the Arabic, and he, he um, uh, Aramaic, <laughs> and he, he knows the Greek and the Hebrew and the English, and he's a linguist, and he's, he looked into this and this parable. So I'm going to read it to you, how, what his interpretation is, and I believe this will bless you. He said, this is Matthew 13, dear friends. Um, uh, let's see, uh, for, uh, let's see, 44. Uh, let's see, the most accepted interpretation of this parable is that Jesus is the treasure, and we'll agree with that, won't we? But Jesus taught that the field of is the world in verse 38 that's the field because the the field there and the, the word is sown the good soil into the field okay um but the allegory this an allegory has deeper meanings that's what an allegory is an allegory breaks down for a believer doesn't sell all that he has remember we were thought oh jesus is so precious and, and precious and you need to give up everything and oh how do you do that and uh, you can't uh, the believer doesn't sell, sell all he has his works and then buys the world then buy buy the world to find jesus the treasure it is more plausible here's a different meaning and i i love it uh, to view the hidden treasure is a symbol of you and me. Ah, can you grasp that? A treasure? Well, how would this be? How would this be a symbol? Jesus is the man who sold all that he owned, leaving his exalted place of glory to come and pay for the sin of the whole world with his own blood. Now, does that sound right? <laughs> He came and bought the field. I was a treasure hidden there. Oh, but I'm not a treasure at all. Oh, I was so sinful, and I was born in sin, and I have this sinful nature. Well, hang on. <laughs> yeah, but Jesus came and paid for the sin of the whole world with his own blood just so he could have you, his treasure. Heaven's kingdom's realm is experienced when we realize what a great price Jesus places on our souls, for he gave his sacred blood for us. He gave all he had, didn't he? What more could he give? Oh, there is a verse that talks about it. Oh, what more could he give? Oh, he'd give more if he could, but he didn't have anything more to give. He left his home in glory, and I want you to just, re just remember that. How could he ever do that? Oh, but God, he volunteered. He knew what was going to happen. Okay, now, the rehiding of the treasure is a hint of our new life hidden in God. So the treasure was hidden there in the field, wasn't it? And that's the world. Oh, but let me say, God saw from the beginning, and that's also in the book of Job, um, that God saw who you were. He saw what you would become. He saw the gifting that he gave you, that you were the treasure. You had this, he's going to give this to you and this. And you say, I didn't know that. No, but he had a plan for you. He has that when he created any child, any child in the womb has a destiny, has a destiny and has giftings. And I want to say to you, it's not an accident you were born for this time and this age, because you have a destiny for now, for now. That's why God is, is so displeased when babies are destroyed, because he saw you, like even he said in the book of Job. It said, um, let's see, and I've got the book of Job here. I want you to look, Job chapter 1, no, not, not Job, 
um, this is uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Jeremiah, Uh, he saw, he said, I called you as a child, Jeremiah. Here, I have it right here. Okay, you got it? Jeremiah 1, verse 5. Before I formed you in the womb, before I formed you and me in the womb, because I'm saying this is the treasure. He knew about us because he knew everything. He knew everything. He, he's not surprised of what happened with this pandemic or what's happening to America or your country. He's not surprised. He knows. He knows. And he said this to Jeremiah. Oh, before I, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Same way for us. He knew us. We were not an accident. Okay. And... Before you were born, I consecrated you, which means I had a destiny for you. I planned things, plans formed long ago that you, dear friend, were to be born for this time in your nation because he's calling you to be an intercessor, a warrior, that you can do something. You have a destiny. You are a treasure. But you say, oh, I made so many mistakes. We all have. All we have. We're born with this sinful nature. But when Jesus died, he presented us to the Father. I was reading in the book the other day. This is Andrew Murray. And I just happened to run across this even last night. Andrew Murray, like Christ. And as he said, when the Lord Jesus redeemed us with his blood and presented us to the Father in his righteousness, he did not leave us with our old nature to serve God as best we could. Haven't we been doing this, serving him the best we could? No, this is Andrew Murray in his book, Like Christ. No, in him dwelt um, eternal life, the divine life of heaven. That's what was planted in us, a divine life, the same life that was in Jesus. Now, Jesus laid it down, didn't he? And it became a man. But uh, as an example, let me read on. Um, when we were born again, we received the same divine life uh, into and with its power, the same divine life is in us when we've surrendered to God. There was a divine exchange, dear friends. Yes, we were born uh, with a sinful nature. God knew it, but he gifted us. He had a plan for eternity with each of us, like he did with Jeremiah. Okay, we, we, we receive the same divine life with its holy power. We can let his power work through us if we know it. Some of us don't know. We think, oh, this is hard. I can't do it. That's true. <laughs> we can't. But he gave us a divine power. He exchanged. He took like he, he took us out of the ground, buried in the, the another kingdom of, of unrighteousness. And he bought us, paid the whole price for each of us because he have a destiny. Okay, his power works through us. It should be natural as we surrender to him. It should be natural. It shouldn't be such an effort. Oh, I can't do that because I can't. <laughs> we know that. No. And now here's more quote that Andrew Murray has. The father showed us in Jesus' earthly life what the life of heaven would be like. And when Jesus came down to circumstances in a human earthly life, he showed us Jesus was the example that we can follow and say, Jesus took on, well, not the sin nature, 
but he laid away, laid in heaven his divine nature. Uh, I don't know. It's a mystery how he could do that. Oh, they debated about this for centuries. Oh, he couldn't do that. He couldn't do that. And yet, but Jesus did. He took on a human nature. He called himself the son of man, didn't he? Because he wanted to be an example for us, dear friends. He wanted to be that example. Oh, living in the circumstances and being dusty and dirty and tired and uh, misunderstood. And he knew what he was getting into. Oh, in Christ's life, this is Andrew Murray, we have an exact, uh, let me read it. In Christ's life, we have an exact pattern of what the Father wants us to be. So as we look at Jesus, and uh, Andrew Murray writes a whole book there with all these chapters. Look at the Jesus character. What did he do here? What did he can do? Uh, we can do that too. We say, no, I can't. I can't. No, I can't. <laughs> but we were grafted into the vine, dear friends. The, the juice, the, uh, the sugar, or the, the vitamins or whatever from the vine comes into us. We can do it if we keep our eyes on Jesus. I know the other day I woke up and I was kind of tired because I was, I was praying about Haiti the other day and I think, oh God, <laughs> those dear people, mm, those dear people. And I was praying in tongues and I, I, I lost some sleep. It's okay because I got some other friends. You do too that you're praying about. And I woke up in the morning and I had a commitment to go someplace at 9.30 and I woke up and I said, oh God, uh, I, I really don't want to go to this place, but I promised I would be there. And so the scripture came to me, and I want you to write this down, Psalm 105, verse 4. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. So I did, God. Oh, God, as I'm going and drink, have some orange juice or something, the strength started to come. And I thought, no, I can do it. I can do it. I'm seeking the Lord and his strength. He gave us his divine nature. It's in us. We don't feel it. It's okay. But as I seek his face continually, not the what the, what my back feels or my leg feels or what my mind feels or anything it's I seek his face continually David said that and I have set the Lord continually beside me because he is at my right hand I shall not be moved therefore my heart is glad my glory rejoices and my flesh shall dwell securely no COVID is coming on you dear friend no, no, no. You have a divine nature. You're living under the shelter of the Most High, of Psalm 91. You are under the shelter of the Most High. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Oh, we are looking at Jesus. Uh, and as Isaiah said the other day, um, Oh, I long to be gracious to, the, the Lord is saying, I long to be gracious to you, but as long as you are longing for me, have you come to that point, dear friends, and say, God, I can't do it. I long to be close to you. That's what he wants for us. That's why we were, we were created to be his children. And that's what Jesus knew when he was going to the cross. Remember, he despised, the, he, he thought nothing of the shame. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus did that. Oh, oh he, he thought of us. He thought, I'm going to the cross. He knew it. He was actually uh, uh, done that before the foundation of the world. He did that. He took those stripes. So he, he knew that. Uh, but I don't understand. <laughs> it's a mystery. But he saw into the future. He said, I need to go through with this. Remember in Gethsemane, he said, oh, Father, is there any other way? Oh, so thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You didn't give up on us. 
you saw into the future. Even in John 17, he said to his disciples, or, or he prayed to the Father, oh Lord, oh, I pray for those that will come to know me through their testimony that we will be one with you, Father, one with you. Okay, hallelujah. Uh, but let's see, I said, in Christ's life, we have the exact pattern of what the Father wants us to be. And he said, the Holy Spirit is your helper. And I say, oh, thank God. <laughs> I can't do it. Well, he wants us to know that. We can't do it. And oh, we went try and try. I know you feel helpless at times, and that's what he wants us to feel. And that we long for him. We long for him. Uh, the Holy Spirit is our helper. Uh, he, and, and then I remember the vine. Remember, we are uh, planted, grafted into the vine. So we need to think, yep, I can't. That, that's God's plan. As I bear fruit, if I don't bear fruit, I get my, my, my <laughs> get, or I'm going to get pruned. <laughs> Hallelujah. But let's seek his face continually. Okay, now, but I say you were not a mistake. He had faith that we would complete when God the Father looked down and saw that treasure in the field. He knew he had the faith that we would complete our destiny in Christ that we would understand and that we'd be hungry for him. We would read the word and think, no, I'm not a treasure. Yes, you are, dear friend. You are because of who dwells in you. And so you can pray for your nation. We can pray for our loved ones that, that are, well, confused. Ah, oh, there are some. We don't get an argument. Do not get in an argument. We speak to that mountain and say, Get out of the way. We are not going to be in strife. Oh, we can speak the truth in love, but we're not going to be in strife. We're going to say, oh, I have faith that they will complete, our family will complete the destiny that God has given them and that we will too. But you know, after that Mark 11, 23 and 24, he says, you say to this mountain, if anybody believes that what he says will come to pass, he shall have what he said. But are you walking in love? And, and Jesus, or God, put that love in us, didn't he? That Romans 5, 5. He put his agape love in us. Um, our pastor had a good example <laughs> the other day. It was so, oh, I could visualize it. And he said, yeah, we're rooted and grounded in love like a tree, like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. Now, you don't see the trees moving, do you? I thought, no, no, because they're rooted and grounded in the water. And God said, we are rooted and grounded in love. I don't feel it, but God said it. He planted his love in me, and I'm not going to move away from that. I can't do it. I can't, but I put my roots down into him. I read the word. Okay, let's see. I think I covered that. Okay, okay. So I want to say, and there's another, um, let's see, Jeremiah, I told you that he was formed you in the womb. I knew you before. And uh, Jeremiah argues with him and he said, oh, Lord, I don't know how to speak. I'm a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say you are a youth, dear friend. Behold, I put my words in your mouth. Uh, and then Jeremiah 1, 12, I'm watching over my word to perform it. Jeremiah 5, 14, behold, I am making my words in your mouth as fire. So I'm declaring that over your, you, dear friends. Uh, you have a treasure. You are the treasure. And Jesus is the treasure that is planted in us. And by his grace, we can do it. It's a mystery, but we can. We can. Isaiah 20, 33, verse 6. He is the stability of your times, a wealth of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is his treasure treasure, treasure, treasure. So I declare 
dear friend, that you, as you keep seeking him, reading the word, eating his word, it's a gold, it's a treasure, uh, that you are blessed. You have the divine nature in you. It was planted, exchanged. He took your old nature and took you out of the world, took the dirt away, washed you clean, and now for destiny in your nation with prayer, with prayer in humility and the blood of Jesus set you free and it continues to set you free. You are free. I declare sickness. I command you to go. Insecurity, anger, bitterness. I command you to go. You cannot come. Oh, we have a new nature, divine nature. We have given to us freely by the blood of Jesus. We declare you are free. Sickness, leave in the name of Jesus. Devil, lying, devil, leave in the name of Jesus. Speak freedom and joy. Freedom and joy. Hallelujah. You are precious treasure for these last days. God bless you. Hallelujah.